Hey. <laughs> Hi. My name is Dallas. My name is Amelia. And welcome to Quarantined Kitchen. Today is our very first episode, and we're going to show you things that you can make while you're quarantined in your house and aren't allowed to go anywhere because everyone around you is getting very, very sick. Since normally Amelia here would be in school, it would be lunchtime. And for lunchtime, what we normally have is turkey and mayonnaise sandwiches. And since we're trying to ration out because who knows how long we'll be stuck in our house, we're gonna stick with the theme of turkey and mayonnaise sandwiches. Now, like most of you, I went to the store just a couple days ago and I made sure to buy every loaf of bread that I could find and then I put it in my freezer. Some of it, I just threw it away because who needs all that bread? So we're gonna show you the essential items you need to make a turkey and mayonnaise sandwich. Of for course you guys know because it's called a turkey mayonnaise sandwich so you're gonna need turkey and mayonnaise and bread. You're gonna need turkey, mayonnaise, and bread. And avocado, I want avocado. That's, we only have so many avocados. One of the most important things is having a nice, clean, working area. Of course, you'll need a paper towel for the sandwich to go on. Look at them shoes. And the sandwich itself, well, the bread. Because right now, we're gonna start building our sandwich. What I like to do is start with a base of mayonnaise. Oh, got a little bit too much mayonnaise there. That's okay, I'll just wipe off the excess. Excess. Wipe off the egg. Now a lot of parents think it's very, very fun to let your kids also help build the sandwich. And I'm no stranger to trying to hang out with my kid and have a cool time. But man, does it take a while. Ooh, just doing it so, you know, we work through it, we work through it together. But it, it just, it's one slice of bread. I just wanna rip that knife right out of her hand and do it for her, <laughs> right? Am I right, parents? It's just so much mayonnaise. It's so much. Gotta raise them right. Let them figure it out, right? Let them figure it out for themselves. It's not like drugs, it's just a sandwich, but we gotta let them work it out. Wipe it off that excess. A excess. And now it's time to add our turkey. We're using hickory smoked honey turkey from Sprouts. Hopefully they stay open, right? <laughs> Probably not. Now it's time for the avocado. We use Mexican Californian, Baja Californian, Mexican grown avocados. Not a sponsor. Our sandwich is done. We fold over the top and it's complete. Look at those perfectly cut triangles. One happy kid. And that's a turkey and mayonnaise sandwich. Thanks for watching episode one of Quarantine Kitchen, day one, lunchtime. We'll probably pair that with some grapes, maybe some carrots. Grapes. Maybe some carrots. Grapes. Tune in next time for another Quarantine Kitchen where we talk about dinner. It's gonna be a long, long quarantine. I started going to volleyball games with my daughter, uh, my daughters, about four years ago. And it started out as a thing to do with my daughters on a Saturday afternoon. We'd go to USD women's uh, volleyball games, uh, University of San Diego. And they're really an excellent team. They're always a top 20 team, and, and it's a fun environment and a cool thing to do. And, of course, I kind of started um, going overboard 
with it pretty quickly. And now I'm like a huge, rabid volleyball fan carrying forward my my huge sports fandom from when I was a kid uh, into adulthood here in this this new uh, world. Uh, my daughters, though, they actually took it to another level last year. Well, last year, one day I was driving them down to a game and they were real quiet in the back seat, which isn't too unusual, but they were super quiet and I kind of noticed it, but was enjoying it. And I got down to Mission Valley and uh, pulled up to our uh, parking spot at, at USD. And, uh, and I look around uh, behind me and my daughters had smuggled in s- into the car some uh, uh, face paint <laughs> and they had painted their faces with USD. And in addition to that, they'd made this crappy little sign. Uh, literally, uh, it was a scrap of cardboard with USD Toreros scrawled across it. And this is how we went into the game that, that Saturday. Uh, the uh, players saw them because it's, it's easy to sit where you want there. And so we usually sit pretty close to the players. And they saw the girls, and of course, they, they just loved it. And, uh, and they were all pointing it out to each other and look at the the two little girls who have their faces painted with usd and then uh so that was that and and we got home and on the way home i i, I think i told him that their sign was kind of crappy <laughs> that was just a scrap of cardboard and they took it as a challenge i think and because they are both like really really artistic and they made these signs so over the course of the season they they made a sign they made excellent signs big signs for every player on the team with these uh, alliterative, alliterative names like uh, there's a, a a lady named Hannah who plays so they they that her sign says hammer and Hannah and then there's another sign uh, for a, a player whose name is Fiad and her sign says Fiad on fire uh in addition to making the signs, they started making these, uh, making a poster, and they made this poster with every player uh, on the team on the on the poster. There are 13 players on the team, and again, and my daughters are pretty brilliant artists, and they made this beautiful poster. Well, over the course of the season, by interacting with the players, uh, one of the players. Uh, asked to have her picture taken with my daughters and then uh and then in the course of having her picture taken with my daughters she offered to babysit them now imagine your your biggest sports hero or if you're not a sports fan imagine your your favorite childhood author offering to babysit you my my daughter's heads about popped off and and we did in fact have her babysit and when she came and babysitted my daughter showed her the poster and then she said that poster is awesome my daughter said we want to give it as a gift to the team the player went and told the coach and the coach invited my daughters into the locker room before the game so my daughters have through their through being fans of of usd volleyball and this is really all they know they they don't know any other sport i mean just imagine you're you're a fan of whatever the san diego chargers and that's all you know and so that is it so this is it for them and they are getting in the locker room they are having a babysitter and uh they are they are texting uh with with this player and uh it's just been an amazing an amazing thing and it all began with them painting their faces and and i had never never done that in my life and I, they've never seen that in their life I, I don't know where they got that idea but they got that idea and it's uh, taken something that was an enjoyable father-daughter uh, experience uh, for us to go watch games on Saturday afternoon and just made it like one of the really wonderful things that they are going to remember for the rest of their life. Hey everybody, um, 
Welcome to my crib. Um, we're getting ready for Passover inside, so happy Passover. Um, stay six feet, but come on in. This is where the Judaism happens. Hey, so uh, we made our Seder plate, which is like a big part of Passover. So you have matzah, because like, duh. Uh, then we, oh, whoops. Uh, we have that, which um, I don't really know what that is, but it came with this like really good spaghetti we got a couple nights ago. And like, you want to remember and support local business. Oh, and we don't, we don't have wine. Uh, we're not like big wine drinkers, but we do have Michelob Ultra. What is your favorite 10 plagues? Top ten, oh, top oh, ten shit, plagues. Shit. Okay. Um, bees. Mm-hmm. Uh, bee, bee, beaver fever. Yep. Um, what <clears throat> sun are you? The uh, first. Oh, right, but okay. Like the eldest. No, yeah, I know. Like I know. I'd be dead tonight if I wasn't a Jew. The Red Scare. Uh, groups. Uh, we got uh, an egg because spring, and then uh, we got the bone because of uh, like the lambs that died for our sins. Racism. Yep. Um, mosquitoes. And then we have well, we didn't have parsley, but I I guess we had wheat. You didn't tell me we had wheat. That game where you all go under the parachute for no reason. So, Jake. What makes this night different than all of the other nights? Especially the last four weeks that have been just this. I mean, I guess I wore my yarmulke. Dodgers. Great pick. That we got the vitamins, cause like, we wanna be safe during COVID-19 coronavirus. And then the lime, cause of feminism. Orthodontia. child rape and well since there's nothing else really left to do i don't know why not just light the menorah or whatever happy birthday elijah <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody thanks for celebrating passover with us as the saying goes you know Next year, we all might be dead.
I have all of this money, and I don't know where to put it. Look over there. Manufacturer's Bank. Eat that salmon, you bastard. I'll fuck your bitch head. I'll give a fuck. Yep, yeah, I'll give a fuck. <sighs> Can you turn off that awful music? <laughs> hey! Asshole! Turn off that fucking horrible music! Has this been you before? You're trying to read in peace at your favorite coffee shop and some piece of garbage millennial starts playing terrible music on their phone and ruins your day. Well, before you lash out like this... Please stop and have some compassion. They may be suffering from pudocuit also known as people who didn't know headphones were a thing. I mean, I'd seen them on people's heads before while riding the subway and whatnot, but I always just thought they were weird looking earmuffs or some whack ass accessory or something, you know what I'm saying? I remember the first time someone came up to me and handed me a pair of headphones. I was hiking my favorite trail, bumping my shit to keep me motivated, and this woman handed me a pair of what I thought were like earmuffs or something, and I was like, hey, I don't need earmuffs, bruh. It's hot as fuck out right now. And she was like, no, just try them out. They're called headphones. That was the first time I ever heard bass. I don't fuck your bitch, yeah. I don't give a fuck, yeah. I don't give a fuck, yeah. So, next time you're at a coffee shop or hiking your favorite trail and you hear a piece of garbage millennial playing repulsive music on their phone that you just don't understand, instead of lashing out, just hand them a pair of headphones because they might just be a person who didn't know that headphones were a thing. I I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, do you suffer from pudukkaweet? Nah, dummy. I know what fucking headphones are. I'm just trying to floss my sick beats, trying to get some bitches, bruh. Step off, dude.
Um, this is Coyote Hollow Road. It's an unpaved road, and I'm glad of that. And this is the road those guys were walking up. And that's my window over there that I was looking out and seeing them that night that these poyos, these undocumented workers, were coming up this road, hopefully to find their way to El Cajon or Fresno and find work. Uh, all these people are sending money back to their wives. They're here to work. Refugees, late summer night. Woke with a start. The dogs barking out by the fence. Yard flooded with light. Grope my way to the window. Out on the road, a dozen quick figures hugging the shadows, bundles slung at their shoulders and water jugs at their hips. You could hear under the rattle of wind as they passed, the crunch of sneakers on gravel, poyos, illegals who'd managed to slip past the border patrol, its broncos and choppers endlessly circling the canyons and hills between here and Tecate. Out there in the dark, they could have been anyone. Refugees from Rwanda, slaves pushing north. Palestinians, gypsies, Armenians, Jews. The lights of Tijuana, that yellow haze to the west, could have been Melos, Krakow, Kwangai, I watched from the window till they were lost in the shadows. Our motion light turned itself off. The dogs gave a last perfunctory bark and loped back to the house, those dry, rocky hills and the wild sage at the edge of the canyon vanishing too. Then stared out at nothing. No sound anymore but my own breath and the papery click of the wind in the leaves of that parched eucalyptus. A rattle of bones chimes in the doorway. History riffling its pages.